So in this video, we're going to talk about scatter plots and trend and correlation. Um, so, scatter plots are literally <laughs> plots with, with points scattered all over them. They're two variables, so in this case, temperature and sales, and it's quantitative data, which means numbers. Like, I couldn't plot the color blue, for example. So it's gotta be two different numbers. And these usually help us to look for relationships between these two variables. Like in this particular case, we notice as temperature goes up, and this is in degrees Celsius, the sales tends to go up. So it makes generally a line with a positive slope. So that's what we're looking at today. Um, trend is basically like, what's the trend that you notice? Like, what's happening? Is it going up, going down, staying constant? It's also called correlation, as in, co, so like two things, and how are they related? So it's basically, what's the change in the data values, usually over time? A positive trend means like a positive slope. Both data sets go in the same direction. As one goes up, the other also goes up, or as one comes down, the other comes down. Negative trend is the opposite. As one data, go, like, as one variable goes up, like as the x values get bigger, the y values get smaller. So as one variable increases, the other decreases. That would be a negative trend. And again, it's like a negative slope, going down. Sometimes as one variable increases, the other stays the same. Like in this case, as x gets bigger, y is just staying constant. It's just flat. And so that's a constant trend. And then sometimes there is no trend. Maybe the data is all over the place and the variables aren't related at all. There is no correlation between the two. And so that's possible as well. So for example, this one right here, temperature and visitors at the beach, has a positive trend or positive correlation. As the temperature goes up, there's more visitors at the beach, which makes sense. Or as if you have a smaller temperature, there are less visitors at the beach. Um, this one has a negative trend, and this one is actually even a bit exponential. This is kind of like exponential decay, and we'll get more into this later, but this is a negative trend. As one variable gets bigger, the other is getting smaller, and again, it's kind of an exponential function. It's not even linear. All right, what kind of correlation will you expect to see between a person's salary and the number of houses they own? So as one variable goes up, like as you make more money, would you expect to own more houses or less houses? Probably more houses. Like if you make a ton of money, maybe you own more houses than somebody who doesn't make a lot of money. So um, <laughs> this would be a positive correlation. I was just thinking I definitely don't own more houses. It's a positive correlation because as one variable goes up, the other goes up. This is a question that was on your chapter nine uh, human geography test. Which of the following is positively correlated with gross national income per capita? So basically, as this goes up, which of these would go up as well? Because it's gotta be positively correlated. So gross national income per capita is going to go up with this one. I don't know a ton about this, but as the more, uh, your, the higher your GNI per capita is, the more carbon dioxide you tend to emit. It doesn't really have anything to do with, it actually is negatively associated with this. The higher the gross national income, the lower the infant mortality. Um, rate of natural increase, I don't even really know what that is. Uh, rice production, and then distance from the prime meridian, none of those also went up with GNI. All right, um, so here's an example of a table, and if I wanted to graph it, I could, and then I could do my best to draw a trend line through that data. I'm gonna use the calculator to show you how to do that in a second on a different video. And, but one thing I do wanna mention is, when you have a scatter plot and you fit a line to it, 
You have to be careful to not use it to predict past the data. This is called extrapolating, and it gets us into trouble sometimes. So, like, let's say I have this data, and I make a line, the best fit, to kind of like predict where it's headed. However, I only really want to use this line to predict stuff in this interval here, in that domain. If I try to, if I assume that that trend is going to continue, I might be wrong. And this happens in the world sometimes. Like what if the trend actually like plummeted after a little while? For example, uh, this happened with Bitcoin, you know, back in like 2019, 2018, or whenever this was, 2018, Bitcoin kind of skyrocketed in value. But if so, if I would like made an equation and used that pr to predict where it was going, I might have thought it was going to be up in like the millions by now. But this is what actually happened. It went back down. And then it continues to go up and down. But just be careful with extrapolating because you don't want to use some sort of equation of best fit to be predicting outside of the data itself. Um, by the way, trends can get crazy. So like if I was trying to fit an equation to this, it would probably be like, that kind of situation, or maybe some sort of swirly line here. So it doesn't just have to be linear. Um, when you do this process, when you try to fit an equation to the data, it's called regression. It's finding the equation of the best fitting line or curve for data on a scatter plot. So if we're specifically talking about lines, it's called a regression line. You've probably heard this called a line of best fit, and it's called either of those things which is just a line that best represents the data. But again, it doesn't have to be a line. Um, so again, I'll show you how to do this in the calculator a little later, um, but that's kind of where we're headed, is coming up with equations to represent this data.